Welcome to the first of my Fireside Chats, my weekly op-ed program where I get to get a little more intimate with my audience. But in all seriousness, in this show I'm going to be bringing you my thoughts of the week. That might be on a recent news article that's caught my attention, or just a thought that's been in the back of my head and that I really want to share with you. These videos won't be quite as in-depth as some of my other productions, but if you want to hear more on any topic I bring up in these fireside chats, leave me a comment and I'll look into doing a longer video for you. So without further ado, let's get to today's topic. The first thing I want to talk to you all about is my personal favorite BS detector, courtroom filings. Now why courtroom filings, you ask? Well, the simple answer is that words have consequences, and the consequence for lying to a court is the charge of perjury, which is a very easy way to find yourself in jail. Since nobody really wants to go to jail, everyone going before a court is very careful to make sure that everything they say and file is factually correct. So, to use this as a BS detector, we can take things that people say outside of court, on social media, in press conferences, whatever, and compare it to what they file in court. If the two things match, we're all good. If they don't match, well, we can generally assume that their public statements are probably BS, and the things they're filing in court are a little bit closer to the truth. For example, in all of the lawsuits regarding the 2020 election, President Trump and his lawyers claimed up and down that there was fraud everywhere, couldn't miss it, we've got all the evidence. Then they went into court and filed very few cases that involved actual fraud. Most of their motions revolved around technicalities, such as the last date that states could accept ballots, or curing procedures for defective ballots in different counties. Even at times when judges asked them about the claims of fraud that they had made elsewhere, they simply said, no, no, we really don't want to talk about fraud in this court, Your Honor. Thank you, though. And so, generally speaking, if you claim you have all this irrefutable evidence and then walk into court and don't produce it, generally means that evidence might be a lie and you didn't really want to risk perjury by putting it before a judge. Similarly, when uh, Trump's lawyer Sidney Powell was sued by Dominion and Smartmatic for defamation, she claimed that all of her statements outside were statements that, quote, no reasonable person would believe. Again, that distinction. She's claiming up and down there's fraud everywhere and we're going to prove it and release the Kraken goes into court to defend herself against uh, defamation. Yeah, all those things I said, totally unbelievable. Nobody would buy that I was saying that as a factual statement. No, 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 no. Couldn't have been a statement of fact. No, I was exaggerating. Mm, which one is probably true? I'm going with what she said in court. Now, the reason this has been on my mind is that Donald Trump's lawyers recently made a very interesting filing in their attempts to have a special master appointed to review all of the documents from the Mar-a-Lago search warrant. Now, in public, Donald Trump has made a lot of different excuses as to where did the documents come from, who do they belong to, are they classified or not, does anything matter at all? But in court, his lawyers were very silent until they made this particular motion. And... As a part of that filing, they made an argument that I think is very interesting regarding the National Archives' decision to turn this over to the Department of Justice after they had received the initial batch of documents from Trump and found there were classified records inside them. I'm going to quote directly from their filing. <clears throat> quote, This discovery was to be fully anticipated given the very nature of presidential records. Simply put, the notion that presidential records would contain sensitive information should have never been cause for alarm. Now, there's a couple things to unpack here. Number one, yes, there was cause for alarm. Classified information was outside of a classified setting and therefore could very easily have been compromised, leading to a threat to national security. But that's not necessarily a legal argument, that's just common sense. The legal point, which is very interesting here, is firstly that Donald Trump's lawyers say that the National Archives should have known that there was classified information or other sensitive information inside these documents because they were presidential records. Now, that seems like a very obvious and logical statement, and it is. You and I can understand that. It makes perfect sense. And I'm sure the National Archives, when they thought... Ah, Donald has some presidential records. We need to check these and make sure that there's nothing crazy in here. The issue is that if, if I know that, 
You know that. And the National Archives knows that. So should Trump and his lawyers. So they're admitting here that if the National Archives should have known, and you know, obviously we can figure this out too, the implication there is that they knew as well. And they still withheld everything, knowing the fact that they had sensitive information. So that's their first problem. But their second problem might actually be worse, and it's about how they identify these documents. In this filing, before the court, under threat of perjury, they call them presidential records. And why shouldn't they? That's what they are. The problem with that is they're presidential records. And under the Presidential Records Act, they are the property of the National Archives after a president leaves office. So, Trump should have turned them over. And the National Archives asked nicely. Then the DOJ subpoenaed Trump, saying, The court has said you must turn over these documents, which are the property of the U.S. government. And Trump turned over a few more things, and then his lawyer signed a piece of paper that effectively said, We have no more documents. We are legally saying that we assure you, as lawyers, under threat of perjury, that there are no more documents here. And then the DOJ found out that ah, there were more documents, and then came to find that there were over 10,000 documents at Mar-a-Lago after they had completed their search. So that was a lie. And the problematic part of this filing is that they've admitted that they knew these were presidential records. They're admitting that these records belong to the National Archives and that they withheld them because obviously the DOJ had to come find them during the search warrant. So it's, we want to file this person to review the documents that we should have known contain classified information and that we actively knew didn't belong to us, but we were withholding from the government anyway. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but... I imagine that's not a very hard case to make just from this two sentences that I've read to you that Donald Trump is very guilty of the crimes in the search warrant, which are basically all about withholding government records. So now uh, Trump's lawyers are in a bit of a catch-22. They can either agree with that statement and say, yes, we had records we knew we weren't supposed to have because they were presidential records, and because they're presidential records, we should have known that there were classified information inside. And, you know, given the look of classified information, it's not that hard to miss. So, you know, <laughs> that too. Or, they say that what they said in this filing is a lie. And now they're subject to perjury. So this is just a very curious situation where they appear to have confessed to the crime in a forum where if they lied about it, they're committing perjury. And if they told the truth about it, they've just provided evidence against themselves that should be fairly simple to admit into court in a criminal trial because this is a court record now. So, again, I'm no lawyer, but this doesn't look good for Trump. And my BS detector is very confused as to how they're going to handle this. Think about it. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of my content, subscribe to the channel and make sure to hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I post new videos. If you want to support me on my other social media platforms, all the links you need will be in the video description below. If you have any questions about this video or another topic that you'd like me to discuss, leave me a comment and I'll do my best to get you an answer. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.